Guys, welcome to another video. You've got Mr. Everything English. And as you can tell, with the smile, or kind of a smile, I don't really smile that much, but yeah, with the half smile, you can tell, guys, that I am super duper happy for you guys. Why am I happy, guys? Because from the general feedback, from the comments and the DMs and all the messages I'm seeing, English literature seemed to have gone well. We had two lovely exams, paper one and paper two done, dusted, in the bag, tick. And for those of you not doing English Lit for A-Level, you guys don't need to ever worry about Shakespeare again, patriarchy, Freud. All done, finished. Five years of work, now we move on. And now we move on, guys, to English language. English language is the more important GCSE because if you don't get four or above in English language, guys, then that means you failed, which means you have to do the retake. And I cannot stomach any of my students getting below a four. So together, we're gonna make sure that we smash the English language GCSE. The first exam is on June the 5th, and the second exam is on June the 12th. And guys, as I always say, and by now, hopefully you know that I mean this, we're gonna be going over everything for both papers. The focus for this week is going to be paper one because naturally the first exam is paper one. Once paper one is done, we're gonna shift the focus and then we shall do paper two. So guys, today's video, I will be going over all the bones of the question, the timing, the marks, how you structure the exam and everything. Because if I start with language devices or paper one question three, and you haven't got a clue where that question fits in the entire exam, then it's kind of a waste of your time and my time. So guys, I like to take you from, this, from ground zero all the way up to ground number nine. Now guys, today the video will cover the bones. Tomorrow we will be going over question one. Monday we will do question two. Tuesday question three. Wednesday question four. Thursday question five. I forgot what day of the week it was. And then guys, on Sunday at 7 p.m., the day before your English language exam, we will be going live for everything that you need to know for paper one the following day. And that is the schedule, guys, for this week. Now, for those of you asking, guys, yes, I am running a separate course. That course is on Tuesday of this week and Thursday of this week. That's just a much more thorough and detailed teaching of English language. For example, guys, in that course, you can submit your answers, I can mark your work, give you feedback live, you can talk to me live. So that course, guys, is a bit more thorough. With a YouTube video, I put out the content, but I can't really interact live. Uh, with the course, guys, it's gonna be a lot more thorough, a lot more detailed, a lot more interactive. If you wanna do that, you can sign up for that, but I will also continue with the normal content. So, English language paper one. Let's begin. Now, if we look at the entire paper, guys, it is a one hour and 45 minutes exam and it is worth 80 marks. The entire paper, guys, is divided into two sections. Section A, guys, section A is known as the reading section. And this section has question one, two, three, and four. All four questions put together are worth 40 marks which means that section A of the exam is worth 50%. And then guys, we have the second section and this is section B. And guys, section B of the exam is known as the writing section. And this covers question five. And this one question is worth 40 marks. Therefore guys, this one question is 50% of the exam. So if we're gonna begin, and we're gonna begin with common sense, which question is the most important? That is question number five. But this is the overall structure, guys, of the exam. Now next, I'm gonna break down the exam, the order that I recommend students to be doing the exam. Guys, the first thing you do in your exam is question number five. And question number five is known as the creative writing question. And I'll say creative writing loosely because it doesn't mark creativity. Instead, it marks your command of language, your command of structure and your command of vocabulary. But we call it creative writing just so you guys know what I'm talking about. Now, this question, guys, as you all know, 
you either describe the picture or you write a story and this question guys is worth 40 marks and the 40 marks are split 24 is for your content and 16 is for your language now out of these 40 marks guys when you have the 24 and the 16 split you must get this question completed within 45 minutes so guys it's question five it's a very important question it's worth 50 percent um, of the entire paper this one question you are either describing the image or you are writing a story and you are marked on your content and your language now guys i want to really discuss this point here when it comes to creative writing don't get lulled into this belief that you are being marked upon creativity what you're being marked is on the fact that you're sitting an english language gcse exam therefore the exam has a set criteria you can't just get lost in your creative writing and be super duper creative because you are being marked you are being assessed you are being judged against a set criteria now what essentially is that criteria that criteria guys it looks like your command of language devices it looks like your command of vocabulary it looks like your command of punctuation and it looks like your command of structural devices yes there's other stuff there's stuff like spelling and it talks about your sentence demarcation and blah 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 but that stuff i call it common sense if you're going to sit an english language exam you better spell properly or try your best to spell properly no one needs to remind you of that but this stuff is what you must focus on now we are going to cover this guys we're going to cover this in detail in the question five video for now i'm just letting you know what you're aiming to do 40 marks 45 minutes you're writing a story or describing the picture and you're focusing on your language your vocab your punctuation and your structure this is the question that i advise every student to do first once you've done this question what comes next in our exam and planning section and this section guys you are looking to spend 15 minutes of your time now what are you actually doing in these 15 minutes you are reading source a now guys this is the insert in english language paper one they give you one insert one extract in these 15 minutes you're reading source a and you're planning Question one, two, three, and four. Now, I always say that you read and you plan simultaneously. So don't read the source 10 times. You read and plan at the same time because it saves you a heck of a lot of time. So once you've read the source and you plan question one, two, three, four, then you begin section A of your exam. The first question, guys, is question one. And question one, is worth four marks and for this you are spending five minutes and all it is guys is you are writing down four state now do you does everyone need five minutes for this question no not everyone needs five minutes for this question but five minutes is the recommended time so what you do is you read the first paragraph and they might say how uh, sorry um, write down four ways that the weather is presented in this extract and all you do is you pick your four statements then guys after doing question number one you move on to question number two and question number two guys is worth eight marks and for an eight mark question we are spending 10 minutes and in these 10 minutes guys we are looking to write two pretzel paragraphs now what is this question guys this is the language question and for this question we are analyzing the effect of language devices or words and phrases words and phrasing meaning verbs adjectives nouns and adverbs that is that question after spending five minutes there and ten minutes there you then guys move on to question number three and question number three is also worth eight marks and for an eight mark question we are spending ten minutes and in ten minutes we are aiming to do two pretzel paragraphs sounds very very familiar to what we just did and this question guys is the structure question 
Over here, we were analyzing language devices. Over here, we are analyzing structural devices. But it's the same concept. Eight marks, 10 minutes, two preps and paragraphs. And that is question three done. Then guys, we move on to question number four. And question number four is worth 20 marks. And for this question, we are spending 20 minutes and we're looking to write three to four. Guys, for this question, we are looking to write three to four pretzel paragraphs. That is the structure and that is what we're aiming for. Personally, guys, I say three paragraphs is more than enough. But some people, they like to kind of write more. So if you can, that's absolutely fine. And this question, guys, we are looking at to what extent do we agree? And that is your entire English language exam broken down. There is a lot going on, guys, in this exam. In English literature, it was pretty straightforward. Two questions, 50 minutes, 50 minutes. Language, there's a lot more moving parts. There's a lot more things to work around with. If you want to, guys, know how we approach each question, I will cover all of this in the videos. So question one is tomorrow, question two is on Monday, and so on. But this behind me, guys, it tells you what you are preparing for. This is what we have to do. The whole exam is one hour and 45 minutes. You spend 45 minutes on question number five. Then you spend 15 minutes reading and planning. That's one hour gone. Then you spend 45 minutes doing question one, two, three, four. And that's your one hour and 45 minutes of the exam. It is important you know how much time each question is worth. It is important you know how much marks each question is worth. And in my opinion, it is important you know the order that you should be doing the exam in. All right, guys, now that you know the bones of the question, tomorrow we begin by going over question number one. So I'll see you guys then. As always, it's been Mr. Everything English. Peace.